So shifting gears more from the front end of what your user is experiencing to the back end, the nitty gritty and all these technical details, now we're going to talk about the configure tab, which is next on the list of these left hand side tabs. After this, we'll be talking about grow and analyze, go figure. So what does the configure tab do? Basically, there are multiple functions of it, and not all of them will really apply to what we're doing with the bot in our case. But the first very important one is bot publishing. So this is where you connect your page, or rather your bot, you deploy it to a Facebook page. So to be able to deploy a bot to a Facebook page, you need to be an admin on that page. However, there is a slight stipulation to that, and I'll talk about it shortly, that's especially useful if you are a marketing agency creating bots on behalf of a client. So this is where you do this. I'll disconnect the page for the meantime, just to show you an example of how you would connect it. Um, you won't see any of these darkened, uh, grayed out versions because those are pages that mean a bot is already connected to them. And so if this is your first bot, you won't experience that, but it'll list all the pages that you're admin on and you'll select whichever one you want to connect the bot to. Now do note that if you're connecting a bot to a page, as I believe I've mentioned previously, it will take that bot live on the page immediately. So if you have a big page, like I mentioned, you don't wanna do this at least when you're starting creating the bot, because it's under construction, it's in the process. You don't want people accessing it, having a bad experience where they're getting error messages or not connecting to the right places, because then they're not gonna wanna come back. You wanna have a clean, polished version before you publish it to a page. So in the testing phases, you wanna create a mock page where it doesn't matter because nobody's gonna see it, nobody likes the page. So in this case, I'm doing it with this page. So that's how to connect the bot. Again, you need to do that to be able to consistently test your bot, which is a very important part of the process to make it good for the end user. Next, you'll notice the persistent menu. So this is very important. I would say that the quick reply menu, as I showed earlier, is more important than the persistent menu, but it's still a an important part of your bot because users will be accessing it. So I'll throw up a screenshot on the screen showing the persistent menu in action. Basically what happens, well, I'll, I'll put up a screenshot of it on mobile, but I'll show you here on desktop what the persistent menu looks like. So it's accessible right here through this blue hamburger icon, and then it opens up your menu. So of course, if you're like me, you don't like this powered by chat fuel right here, right? You appreciate the platform, you appreciate that it's free, but it looks ugly, especially if you're creating these bots for clients, you don't want them showing or seeing that rather, because if you actually click it, it'll come up with a message saying, you know, this is a free service, it doesn't require coding, and obviously that doesn't make you look great. Now, good news is in the future, ChatFuel, I've spoken with members of their team and they are considering a white label premium version that you pay for to remove that watermark, which I think is great. But of course, in the initial stages of marketing their brand and their product, they wanna get the word out. So that's why they're doing it. At any rate, you can sort of hide this chat fuel watermark in the persistent menu. You can't delete it totally, but you can hide it from most users. So how you do that is you add an, a menu item right here, click the plus sign, you create a sub menu, and I'll call this settings. I usually create some conspicuous, conspicuous name so people aren't expecting to see it there. Uh, so I hit hover over the blue, why do I see it right here, and move to settings. And now you can see it's under a sub menu. So yes, it's still accessible, but it's not on that top tier menu, and it's not so invasive, or it's not such an eyesore. So that makes things a little better. Also, you'll notice by default, there's a restart bot button here. Now this is very important. I recommend keeping it in the menu, even if you hide it under a sub menu, because people want to restart the bot if there's an error, right? If they experience something, if something's not loading properly, they want to be able to restart the bot. Now I'll show you how you can also integrate this with AI and program it as such so that if somebody types, for example, help or restart, it automatically restarts the bot. But this is a good option, at least for the time being, especially when you're testing. So you have an easy way to just click and it'll restart the whole bot from the beginning so you can address any errors. So for the time being, I won't dive too deep into the persistent menu, but I recommend creating a similar tab to your quick reply menu. So in this case, I'll just call this menu and I'll create a sub menu out of this. 
Of course, you can link directly from one of these buttons to a block, as you see here with the Restart Bot button. And in this menu, I'll create three buttons to the blocks that we already have, which is Food, which is Catering, and finally Contact. Now you can add a couple more uh, buttons within each of these submenus, but you are limited to a certain amount. So that's why the quick replies are so important because it gives you the ability to add many more options than what you're getting or allowing users to access in these basic menus. So that's ultimately why I recommend quick replies as well. So that's the persistent menu in a nutshell. Next, you'll notice a few more things. This left side, I never edit, which is time zone, chat extensions, and domain whitelisting. For the bots that I create, you don't need any of that. What's important is, number one, payments. I'll go more into this in a later video when we're showing how to integrate e-commerce within your bots. But for now, just know that there are two options for payments, which are Stripe, which is a payment processor, and then you can also use Facebook native payments. So in a nutshell, again, how this works is when you're creating a gallery card, you can actually enable a buy now button on there and you can have people transact and buy right within Messenger, which is really cool. You don't have to redirect them to an external website. So that's really powerful, but again, I'll have a dedicated video on payments later in the course. Next, you have, well, this is really the final option that I use, the broadcasting API token I don't use either. What's important here, lastly, going back to what I was talking about if you're creating bots on behalf of clients, is the invite admin panel right here. Now, this is very important because, as I mentioned earlier, the stipulation to the fact that you need to be an admin to deploy a bot to a page is true, but... If, for example, you're working with a big client and they don't want to make you an admin on their page, meaning you have the ability to look at comments, uh, respond to messages, delete the page itself, obviously that's a big role to give someone. So if you're working with a client and they don't want to give you that level of clearance, that's fine. Because the beauty with Chat Fuel here is that you can click on this invite admin button and it'll generate a link where your client, after, for example, you've signed a contract, it'll send, it'll give you this link that you can send to the client and then they can create a Chat Fuel account or access Chat Fuel through Facebook and they can claim the bot on their page. Of course, if you're doing this before you do this, you always want to create a backup of your bot for yourself that nobody else has access to because if, for example, that client takes ownership of the bot and then they make edits and screw things up, obviously you don't want to have to fix that. So instead, always clone your bot. And I'll show you how to do that right now, actually, while I'm still thinking about it. So to do that, go to the main chat fuel dashboard, click on the bot that you have just created, click on this gear icon, click clone, and then click clone again. I'm not going to clone it in this case because this bot isn't really that valuable, but if that is your circumstance, you always want to create a duplicate bot and then send that to the client while still keeping the admin link to your main bot. So again, that is the configure tab and next we'll be talking about the grow tab.